my worst enemy The flesh that's covering me Brings me down to my knees Welcome to Sermons in the Park a ministry exploring biblical truth from the Word of God, focusing on the truths that help us in our daily walk with Christ in every aspect of our lives. Now, here is your Reverend, Jamie McCaskill. Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to an all-new Sermons in the Park. This is a special one. <clears throat> I'm recording this on Sunday night at 8 o'clock, so generally about this time people are in church, so I thought it'd be interesting to record a Sunday night sermon um, for you guys to make up for the short one that I put up this morning. Uh, and since that one was so short and everything, which was a good episode, I was very happy with, you know, after I delivered the message, I, re I listened to it, I was very happy with it. I want to address the fact that I originally was planning on doing an episode, yes, this morning, for church history. I wanted to talk about the history of the church from its beginnings until now. Uh, that was the episode you almost got that I decided not to do <clears throat> because as I was recording it, I found uh, myself getting angry and I felt that it would hurt the, it would hurt more people than it would help. It wasn't a. It was not good. Um, you gotta realize. I know a lot of you are diff are followers of different denominations. I know. I have Catholics who listen to me. I have Pentecostals who listen to me. I have you know members of the Church of God that I grew up in who listen to me. I have um, you know different denominations who listen. And honestly, guys, it, it would have punched at a lot of. The things that the churches honestly do wrong, and I and um, as I was doing the message and 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 looking at my notes and going through it as I was going recording it, it just felt angry. It didn't feel like it. It. it, it I would have hurt more people than I would have helped. Sure, I would have pointed out some some shortcomings of different things, but in the end. It would have hurt more people. So, that's why that message did not get recorded. I wanted to talk about that before we get started with this one. Um, and the reason I'm doing this one, of course, is I know many of you listen to my... Uh, listen because you first discovered me through my talks about the end times. So, what we're going to do for this episode is we're going to... Uh, well, first let me mention this. This will be the first part in what I hope to be a multi-part multi <laughs> timeline of the end times. You know, things like how long will the period be? How will the world be prepared for the rule of the beast and the false prophet? You know, what will be the first thing that 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 evil duo of the beast and the false prophet was the first thing that they will do. Now, you see, like I said, that this is titled A Timeline of the Last Days. Now, that phrase, I want to point out, the last days, is the timeline of the prophecy, right? We see it used seven different times in the old King James. In Mark 24, or I'm sorry, Matthew 24 and Mark 13, we see Jesus discuss the end times, uh, and uh, he discusses the events that lead up to them, right? Uh, the time that's called the Great Tribulation, or the last days, is a period of about three and a half years, or 42 months, if you prefer that, that, that wording. And yes, these times are coming real soon. So just remember that. So I want you to read with me Revelation chapter 11, verses 2 and 3. When we look there, what do we read? But the court, which is without the temple, leave out 
and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under four... I'm sorry, let me start over. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and mark it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. And it will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Now that's talking about, of course, the uh, the two witnesses, right? Now, this all right here will take place just right before Jesus comes back. And, and during this time, okay, the beast and the false prophet, they're going to rule the world. We see these 42 months here listed in Revelation 11.3, right? But it's also listed in Revelation 12. 6, where it reads, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now these 42 months that are mentioned here, can, they can be divided into two different pieces. And by that I mean, we have the first piece, which was going to last for about two years. And the second and last is the day of the Lord. I want you to take a look with me. Isaiah 2, 12. It says, For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. And then when we look at Joel, Joel chapter 2, verse 11, we read, And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? And then lastly, I want you to look at one more verse with me. We're going to look at Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10, which reads, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now the day of the Lord that we're talking about here, when you add it all up, comes to about 18 months. And, <clears throat> sorry, this period, it, it will represent the Lord directly punishing those who are unrepentant. Over in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, we actually read where Paul, he's warning Timothy, you know, the, the apostle, his, his friend, about the time before the Lord returns. And what does he say? He says this, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Okay? And then Peter, Peter warns the church. He, warn, he warns the church about the state of the world as the time gets closer, right? Look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. Now these people, these scoffers, we see these people today. These are the people who when you or I go, well, it's, it's coming, it's close. They'll go, oh, it's always been close. They're also part of the prophecy. You just read it right there. The Bible is so clear about when all this, you know, when it about all of this, when it tells us this, it tells us of several different events that will gradually, okay, lead us into the end times. It tells us that humanity will uh, adopt a very negative attitude towards the laws of God. That they will reject them. They won't keep them. And this will actually cause these people to become unmerciful, unforgiving, unloving. Doesn't that sound familiar? That's the days we're living in right now, isn't it? There are people who will who will rather feed a dog than a human. Who will watch a human starve so they can feed an animal. There are people who will see a homeless man on the street corner and will not help them, no matter what. And then these same people will turn around and tell you they're Christian. These are the days we live in. I want you to read something else with me. Matthew chapter 24. We're going to look at two different things. We're going to first look at Matthew 24, 
verses 9 and 10, 9 and 10, and then we're going to read verse 12. So first, Matthew 24, 9 and 10 reads this. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Notice this is offended right there. That's the state of the world now. People get offended by some of the dumbest things. Okay, now let's look at verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That, you know, that right there is just talking about how they'll be so loving their, their sins that they will start to, like I said, hate anyone that tells them they're wrong. Then the Bible tells us that the world will start to see wars occur, occur, uh, sorry, <coughs> occurring more frequently. We hear we, when we read it. When we read, we, when we read it, we, what do we read? Wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, famine, and 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 other calamities. Right? Read it with me. Matthew chapter twenty-four, verses six and seven. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, you see? But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Okay? So we've been seeing more wars, haven't we? More and more wars are happening every day. And then we see that what does the Bible also warn us about? False prophets. These false prophets who will come about and they will deceive many people, masses of people. With what? What does the Bible say? False hope. Just like those prosperity preachers we just did an episode on. Read with me. Matthew, chapter, we're going to first look at Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 and 5. And then we're going to skip to verse 11. And then we're going to skip again to verses 26 and 27. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 11. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive. What does it say? Many. And then in verses 26 and 27, we read this. Wherefore, is, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the light cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see, one of the things we can tell for sure is during this time, Deception is going to be everywhere. So what happens then? Well, the Bible tells us that many of those who, who claim to be a Christian claim that they are true believers. What are they going to do? They're going to abandon the faith. Why? If you're a true believer, if you're a true Christian, why would you abandon the faith? These so-called Christians are going to they're going to abandon the faith because they want to avoid the trials and the tribulations of these last days. Just like how people now are leaving the church over gay rights or the transgender issue or or um, the abortions, things like that. These people are abandoning the faith because of the trials and the tribulations, because they'll have to stand up, because we as Christians are supposed to stand up and put our foot down and say, no! Read with me. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as, for, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, 
For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. As you see, the falling away, these are people leaving the church. These are people abandoning their faith. Now, just before the beast, just before the false prophet, just before the two witnesses appear at the temple, of, uh, at the temple, the temple in Jerusalem will be rebuilt. They're already making plans for that. They've been making plans for that. There, are, there are Jews over in uh, Jewish priests over in Jerusalem training for the return of that temple. And it's at that temple that the quote-unquote abomination of desolation that the Bible speaks of will declare to the world that he is God in the flesh. And he will demand that they worship him. Take a look at Matthew 24, 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place... Whoso readeth, let him understand. And then, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1-4, to we read this. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day, of the, the day of Christ is at hand, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above and all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now let's look at some Revelation quotes now. Um, let's look at uh, Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. We read, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar. And them that worship therein, but the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. In Revelation 13, 8, we read, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain for the foundation of the world. Now, Revelation 13, 12 reads this, And he, exalt, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. That right there is a reference to him having a head wound. Revelation 13, 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast... Sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and and calls that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So if you refuse to worship the beast or its image, you're to die. Now, some people ask this question um, sometimes when I'm talking uh, about to them about the end times. They'll ask me, why will the last days be the most difficult time in human history? Because of what we read in Matthew 24, 21, where it says... For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Well, to me, what I, the way I look at it is, 
I can think all humans everywhere at that moment, they have two choices to make, two different options, right? They have to choose one or the other. And no matter which way you look at it, there will be pain. There will be suffering. Think about it this way. If you choose to follow the beast, the Antichrist, if you choose to follow him, to worship him, yeah, you, you forestall the wrath of Satan, right? You're allowed to live on this earth a little bit longer. But there's a great expense with that because, you see, then you'll have to face the punishment from God. Revelation 14 verses 9 and 10 says this, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, they shall, they shall the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And if you're like, you know, you choose God. Let's say you choose to obey God. Yes, you're going to be spared from the wrath of God. Just like we read in Revelation chapter 9 verse 4 which says, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And then, in Revelation 18.4, we read, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Right? So, if you choose God, you're spared that. But, you're also considered an enemy of the world. And you will face martyrdom. We have several verses we can look at here. Revelation 6.11, which reads, And white robes were given unto each one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellowship also, I'm sorry, fellow servants, also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. In Revelation 7, 14, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 13 uh, verses 7 to 10 says this and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and, pow and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain for the foundation of the world if any man have an ear let him hear he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And then go to verse uh, 15 real quick. This, is the, uh, this will be the last one we're going to look at here. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading on my digital Bible on my computer. Give me a second. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that any that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, then we get to we so we spoke about this when we talked about the devil a while back, but the last attack on heaven, right? And this is when we see the devil he, he attacks heaven. Because he's hoping that he can take away control of the universe from God. That him and his demon, him and his demonic army are then defeated by the angels, uh, cast back down to earth, and they're permanently banned from going back up. Uh, we read that in Revelations chapter 12, verses 7 to 10. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought 
and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. You see right there? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Now, because of this, we have a paradox, don't we? Satan, he, he's, he's here on earth and he's visibly ruling. So on one hand, you have Christians. Christians who are being persecuted and killed in, in, in very great number. And everyone else who's not a Christian, they're made to serve. But on the other hand, Pay attention, my prosperity gospel followers. Many will grow very rich and very prosperous. Okay? Now, the beast and the false prophet, they start to deceive people. Right? They start they, they rule the earth. All under the direction of the devil. Revelation 13, verses 3 to 15. Go read that. You'll see what I'm talking about. But at the same time, God sends two witnesses. And these two witnesses, they begin to minister. Proclaiming biblical truth, calling people to repent. You can read that over in Revelation 11, um, verses 3 to 7. Now, one thing that we do not hear a lot of preachers talk about, including myself, I don't think I talked about it when I did my episode on Revelation is this place of protection. Um, we, read a, that we read that some of the Christians, but not all of them, are taken away to this place of safety. That's here on earth, by the way. I want to talk about that. I want to make sure I mention that. This takes place during the tribulation. Uh, we'll look at the verses. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 6 says, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed... Feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Uh, skip down to verse 14, you read, And the woman were given two wings of an angel, I'm sorry, two wings of a giant eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, and times and half a time, for the face, from the face of the serpent. And then Revelation chapter 13, verse 5, we read, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Now these believers um, that are taken to this, this, this uh, place of protection, they're protected from the horrors that the government ran um, let me back up. <laughs> These believers that are taken to the secret place, while they're there, they're protected from the horrors that we see from that we would see from a government that is ran by Satan. They'll be spared. They'll live out the last days, waiting for God, waiting for Jesus to return. Take a look at First Thessalonians. We're going to look at verse uh, chapter fourteen, verses sixteen and seventeen, which reads. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, and meet the Lord in the air, and so shall ever be with the Lord. And Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 Verses 51 to 53, we read, Behold, I, saw, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the, this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, <clears throat> Let's look at 
let's look at one that a lot of people always want me to talk about. And that is, of course, the mark of the beast throughout COVID. That's all the emails I got was people wanted to know about the mark of the beast. You see, soon after the beast and the false prophet take control, they're going to demand. You hear me? Demand that everyone take the mark of the beast. And if you refuse to accept the mark of the beast, you're not going to be able to buy anything. You're not going to be able to sell anything. And that includes food. When I say anything, I mean anything. And if you do not take the mark of the beast, you will be hunted down and killed because you're considered disobedient to the Antichrist, to the beast. Take a look at Revelation chapter 13, verses 14 to 17, which reads, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast which had the wound by his sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed and he causeth all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name now <clears throat> i'm about to do something i don't usually do um i usually you know, if you listen, I always back up anything I say with scripture. And I'm going to do that. But this time I'm going to talk about something that I own, that I personally believe. my One of my own personal beliefs here. You've watched me long enough. You've listened to me long enough. You know that I study the Bible. I, 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 I look throughout it. I, I study things. I make sure that everything that I teach here is backed up with scripture. Now, I love reading books. I love watching movies. One of my favorite movie series is, is, of course, Left Behind. I love Left Behind. I love the books. I still read them. I'm reading, I'm reading the Left Behind Kids right now. But I do not see any biblical evidence of what people call the rapture. Now, now hear me out here. I'm going to tell you why. Because the Bible makes it clear. It makes it very clear that there will be true believers on the earth during the final days. It makes it clear that these true believers, many of them, if not all of them, will reject the mark of the beast. And it makes these, these true believers a target for persecution. And they will be martyred. Take a look. Matthew chapter 24 verse 9 then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then in Revelation chapter 6 verse 11, what do we read right here? And white robes were given unto every one of them and it was said unto them that they should rest for they shall rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Okay? Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. And then just a few verses later. Revelations chapter 12 verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Then look at Revelation 13, 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And then the last, verse I'm gonna, the last two verses I'm going to ask you to look at, I promise, <laughs> for today, uh, at least for today, Revelation chapter 14 Verses 12 and 13. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God 
and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. So why do I find it important to bring this up? If you listened, you already know. Because a true believer will not take the mark. Isn't it what I said? If you believe strongly in the rapture, let's say the rapture happens. Is me sitting here right now saying that I don't believe it's going to happen going to keep me from getting raptured if I'm a true believer in Christ? No. But let's say... Because this is one of those that I, I talked about the other day where there's these small, unimportant issues that people argue over. And this is one of them. I find no biblical evidence for the rapture. That's all I'm saying. But let's say you're a strong believer in the rapture. You're someone who says, the Antichrist isn't here yet because we're still here. What will happen when the Antichrist comes and starts offering the mark of the beast saying, if you don't take this, you're not going to be able to buy and sell food. If you're a believer in the rapture, you're possibly going to take it. If you're one of those people who believe the rapture is going to happen and, and, and without the rapture, that means the Antichrist isn't here yet. This man's telling me if I don't take this mark, I'm going to not be able to eat. Do you see the problem there? When I look at the Bible... And I study it. I see no biblical evidence of the rapture. I just read the same verses you do. I've read some of the ones you use to defend it. I don't see any evidence of it. But again, if you believe in it, good. Just think about that, that possibility that it might not happen. If it happens, great, wonderful. We go to meet the Lord in heaven. But there's nothing that says that we won't that we are. I just read verses to you that take place during the tribulation that you that the people who believe in the rapture will th believe they're not going to witness. But it says right there that there are saints that there are true believers on this planet who are being killed by the antichrist because they refuse to take the mark. And then I, I had one person one time tell me, well, yeah, there'll be people converted afterwards. How can they, how can they learn if they did, they, how can they learn if there's no one to preach it? The Bible says that too. So just keep that in mind. Um, again, this isn't something that, that I, I feel a need to kind of argue over. It's just one of those things that stays on my mind. Um, It's just it's just one of those. So we're, we did the day we uh, next time we do one of these. I want to do one called the Day of the Lord. So that'll be the next one. Um, so if this is something you like, if something you're interested in, definitely let me know because I know this went longer than my little short one for Sunday morning. So thank you all for joining me here. I pray the Lord continues to bless and keep each and every one of you. I love you all. God bless you. You have been listening to Sermons in the Park with Reverend Jamie McCaskill. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, BitChute, and Rumble. And as always, thank you for listening. There's joy for the morning, sinner be still. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal. So let